Welcome to Out of the Rough. In these tough economic times, I want to give you practical solutions to many of life's challenges. And on today's show, I have Mark Emmer. Mark Emmer is a specialist, a consultant when it comes to strategic planning. And you wrote the book, Intended Consequences, uh, Design the Future You Wish to Create. Welcome to the show. Thanks, it's a privilege to be here. Absolutely. Now, what inspired you to write the book? I love the title, Intended Consequences, because in life, we need to intend to create a future that we want to have. Right, exactly. So um, the title of the book really is a reflection of a personal philosophy that I have, which is we've been through an entire decade of volatility. We've seen 9-11 and Katrina and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've had financial turmoil around the world with the liquidity crisis um, and several, several recessions. We've seen natural disasters in Haiti, Chile, uh, Japan, and elsewhere. And I think the lesson for business owners is that we need to be more purposeful in thinking about how the, uh, the future might change and position our businesses so we can actually seize the opportunities ahead and take advantage of volatility. Yeah, being prepared is really fully prepared is what you're talking about, isn't it? Exactly. Absolutely critical in this market. Now, it is a competitive environment, um, very competitive. How do entrepreneurs position themselves in this, this very challenging, uh, competitive environment? Right. Well, in a hyper-competitive marketplace, one thing that I see emerging is more hyper-specialization. So, for example, if you had a heart attack, mm -hmm. would you go to a general <laughs> practitioner or a heart surgeon? A heart, there, without a doubt, a heart surgeon. Okay. Well, the average general practitioner in the U.S. earns about $140,000 a year, and the heart surgeon makes around four fifty. dollars so the marketplace values specialization more than generalization. So I think the lesson there for most businesses is it's very, very important to find a niche where you can uh, infiltrate and dominate and, and be a big fish as opposed to a small fish. Now, you talk about specializing, but now, now uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, consumers look at uh, many goods and services as a commodity. Um, how do you differentiate yourself so you're not looked at or your, your product is not looked at as a commodity. Right. Well, in business to consumer, there's actually a term for it. They call it treasure hunting because what a lot of consumers are doing is they're trading, trading down on some goods so that they can afford other luxury goods. You could be sitting on a Southwest flight and the gentleman next to you is wearing a Rolex watch. So why, why does a guy with a $10,000 watch dig to save $20 on an airfare. And we're finding business, business, business behavior to be very, very similar. So um, one of the things we've really seen in the last four or five years is in almost every marketplace, the middle has eroded. So if you look at department stores, for example, um, Nordstrom's always seems to do well. Walmart always seems to do well. But in the middle, the companies like Mervyn's and Montgomery, Gord, Montgomery Wards have gone away. Um, I always say Sears and, and Kmart merging, that, that's like two guys who don't know how to swim grabbing for each other. <laughs> uh, I like that. Right. So, I like um, that. But so I think the lesson for small businesses is, is you, you really either need to decide you, that you're going to be the low-cost leader, which is a sandbox that most small businesses cannot play in for very long, or you have to have a highly differentiated offer. And even when you have the highly differentiated offer, the burden you carry there is that you have to continuously expand your bundle of services um, so that your customers don't, in effect, get bored of you. Right. Okay. And and so the marketing message. Let's talk about the marketing message um, because everyone's being blitzed with so much marketing. Um, so m there's different ways to contact somebody. Facebook. There's social right. media. There's the internet. There's the uh, traditional media, TV, video. How do you differentiate yourself in these really uh, market blitz environment? Yeah, I, I think marketing is fundamentally broken. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is that most technologists really don't understand marketing, and most marketing folks really don't understand technology. Mm -hmm. And so I think the result that we see is a lot of the marketing collateral websites I see, they're very mechanical. This is what we do. This is who we are. And the great marketers will tell you that the way that you really connect with people is through some kind of emotional attachment. So the great marketing out there 
Um, the messages are very concise, and they make an emotional appeal to the person they're trying to connect to. Now, give me an example of an emotional appeal. I, I know a lot of the marketing we did, uh, we tested, and, and if you uh, had a picture of a child or, or a child in their family or a, a lady, it seemed to have, uh, would uh, draw more attention than maybe something, a picture of a house if, we're, if you're marketing real estate, because it brings that emotional side in. Well, this is more sales than marketing, but I think it'll give you this, the same uh, feel. My wife and I, we went to this uh, nonprofit event two or three years ago, and I decided that I wanted to buy a new tuxedo. So I went into the department store and I asked the salesman, I said, um, you know, I love that white dinner jacket look. Do you think you could show me a white dinner jacket? So he throws one on my back and he says, he says to me, that is James Bond. <laughs> and I thought to myself, never in the history of mankind did a transaction close so, so fast. <laughs> right. So what he had done is he had, he had made an emotional connection with me. And, you know, if he had shown me two or three black jackets, I, I probably would have gone through this very logical comparison of their quality and how they fit and so on. Right. But once he put the, the emotional white jacket, side of it, he yeah. put the white well, jacket on the and back. And what did your wife say over. when you got home? Uh, <laughs> we'll leave that for uh, intended consequences, designing the future you wish to create. We're going to jump to a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk with Mark about uh, how the entrepreneur can compete with the big stores in this competitive market environment.